And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sicilian Shotgun with Michael Stevenson. I am your Sicilian mentor, Maurice Domino, and welcome to the Sicilian Mentor Studios. Yes, it's still under construction here, but we're still going. We're still moving forward using this brand new technology. Well, I, yes, I know Google's not brand new, but the Google Hangouts. I am totally getting into the groove here, uh, and I want to thank DNet and the whole crew over there for turning me on to Google Hangouts. Yes, this is the Sicilian Shotgun. I am your Sicilian mentor, the home of not only the shotgun, but also the Discover Your Million Dollar Message Intensive presented twice a year, every spring and fall in the Los Angeles area, as well as the master class. And also our putting the social into social networking, uh, our Sicilian Sunday dinners. But tonight we have a very special show for you tonight. Uh, a good friend of the family, Michael Stevenson, uh, he is an international speaker uh, and trainer of hypnosis. And for nearly 15 years, he has, he has the worldwide experience of showing you how to transform your words into that hypnotic language. And in fact, that's what we're going to be talking about. In fact, his hit book, Becoming a Hypnotic Influence Ninja, is on the market. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later on. I want to welcome Michael Stevenson to the show. Michael, welcome to the Shotgun. Hi. How you doing? I am, I am doing, I'm doing great. So good, to, so good to have you here. Now, uh, I, I I just want to say that, uh, from my understanding, uh, is is this your first Google Hangout? Let's get this out of the way. Is this your first Google Hangout? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's my. I'm a Hangout virgin. This is my first one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely want to. I definitely want to thank you. I definitely want to thank you to uh, the Sicilian Shotgun uh, provided or via the Google Hangouts. Now, Michael and I go uh, go way back, and you know what? I absolutely love Michael's message, and that's why I've invited him. Uh, to be one of our guest speakers at this at this year's uh, spring intensive, uh, and his whole idea of that hypnotic language. In other words, I do believe that there is, and please forgive the expression, and Michael, chime in if you wish. I do believe that when you're getting up in front of an audience, and let me tell you, so getting up in front of an audience could be getting up in front of them at on a line at Starbucks uh, with a with a with a Facebook post, or even up on stage that there's a certain amount of psychological warfare that's going on. In other words, there's already that inherent resistance going on, even if you just want to say hello to somebody or just share with them an, an unbelievable message. And this yeah. is what I love about Michael is he shares with us this, this uh, hypnotic language, this uh, persuasive language, if I may. Uh, and, you know, in fact, let, let's go back to it. You, 15 years, uh, NLP, uh, uh, hypnosis, how did you get started? What 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 brought you to this to this point in your life? Well, uh, you know, 15 years ago, I was a computer programmer. Um, I was making about three uh, about a quarter million dollars a year, um, 250 to 300 thousand dollars a year. Um, I had all the things that they tell you should make you happy. You know, I had the money, I had the car, I had the benefits, I had all the vacation. I had six weeks of vacation every year, um, big screen TVs. I had everything that I that I supposedly wanted. Yet. Um, I was miserable. I would wake up every morning dreading going to work. I'd wake up every Monday wait, saying, when is Friday going to get here? And then the weekend would come when you're supposed to be off and having fun. And, you know, it turned out that my time was still all going to other people. I really felt like I wasn't in control of my life. And the biggest thing I wasn't in control of was a habit that I had, a 14-year smoking habit. I smoked, uh, near the end, I was smoking almost three packs a day. And very expensive habit, very tough on my health. My lungs were so bad. I remember my kids when they were little looking at me and going, Dad, why can't you play hide and seek with us? Well, it's because I couldn't run. I was out of breath all the time. And uh, one day I was at the Orange County Fair, and uh, I bought a, they had a, a sale. Uh, the Orange County hypnotist was there. He was doing the stage show. He was hypnotizing people on stage and doing all these crazy things. And like most people sitting in the audience, I was just looking up at that stage and going, okay, this isn't real. Right? Those people, are they're either paid to be up there or they're drunk or they're incredibly gullible. But, you know, this hypnosis stuff can't be real. Well, as I walked out of the show, the guy had run around. He's standing behind a table. He's going, step right up. Get your hypnosis tapes. Three for 20 bucks. And I've always been one of these people, like, I'm, I'm super attracted to secret knowledge. You know, I learned how to pick locks. I took a correspondence course years ago, learned how to pick locks. Um, I, you know, I, I was into the silver mind control method when I was a kid, which is all about how to run your own mind. Um, I just love secret knowledge, and I thought, I have got to know what those words are. What are those? Because the hypnotist back then, he used to turn his microphone off when he would hypnotize the, the people on stage. So you'd never hear what he said. 
And I, I didn't believe in hypnosis, but I was so curious to know what the words were. I slapped down a $20 bill, and I picked up three tapes. It was Quit Smoking, and then uh, the next best one I could find was Improve Your Memory. And then the third one, the only other one I could find that was interesting was Improve Your Psychic Ability. Um, and I always tell people, I wish I'd listened to the one on Improving Memory first because I can't remember where I put the tape. I never found that thing. <laughs> But so I picked up this quit smoking tape and I had been trying for four or five years to quit smoking everything I could think of. And I picked up the tape and I popped it in and instead of hearing like spooky music and weird voodoo, you know, words, he just had this introduction on there and it said, listen, hypnosis isn't spooky. It's not mind control. It's not voodoo. It is simply the coupling of relaxation and then speaking to the subconscious mind, which is where all your habits are kept. And he said, listen to this tape for three days and on the third morning when you wake up, you'll be a non-smoker. And I just thought, well, that's really reasonable. It's not creepy. It doesn't sound weird. There's no, you know, so I thought, what the heck? It, I already got the tape. I might as well try it. So I popped it in for three nights as I was going to sleep. And the third morning when I woke up, I just never touched another cigarette again. And I'm the guy that tried to quit cold turkey 40, 50 times. My friends would always joke at me, say I was the only guy stupid enough to rip the patch off my arm, smoke a cigarette, and put the patch back on, which <laughs> turns out can give you a heart attack. That's not a smart thing to do. I even tried pharmaceuticals at one point. You know, I tried Zyban, which they came out with, which was supposed to be, you know, the cure for smoking, like most pharmaceuticals are supposed to be the cure, but, you know, how, how often does it really cure things? And my body started convulsing as I was taking it. On the third day, my body was shaking so bad I could hardly drive my stick shift car. Couldn't hold the clutch in. And I just thought, I'd rather smoke. I got home, I looked at the package, and right on the side of the package it said, warning, risk of epileptic seizure. And I thought, no way. I'd rather be a smoker than be an epileptic, you know. So I had tried everything. And all of a sudden, one morning, I wake up and I just never touched another cigarette. I actually figured it out. Uh, one of my relatives quit smoking, so I actually typed this into Google or into Facebook yesterday, so I know it. It's now seven years, 14 months, and 27 days since I quit smoking. Um, and, you know, now at 15 years, my lungs are back to pink. I'm healthy again. I love it, but I just got hooked on this whole idea of what is a subconscious mind. How is it that this guy, you know, Mark is a really good friend of mine now, and, and I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying, he's a little goofy on the tape. You know, he sort of sounds a little like Kermit the Frog. It wasn't like this, he's not a PhD. He doesn't have any college experience. There's no psychology background or anything. How did this guy who makes people dance like chickens on the stage get me to do something so hard so easily? And I got fascinated. I dove in and I literally just studied everything I could for about two years. I read every book. I, I saw every online video. And in March of 2000, I went and I got my education. I got certified as a, as a clinical hypnotherapist. And uh, the rest is history. I am still to this day just as passionate about it as I was back in the very first day. I love it. I'm consumed by it. And so now what I do is I teach people how to use those subconscious principles in business. Um, you know, there's a lot of people these days saying, oh, the economy's down and I can't get any sales. It isn't about the economy. It's about your ability to connect with people and, and really deliver at that subconscious level. And that's, and that's actually two things I like to cover. First, I, I like to cover, and I'm a big believer, and this is my whole point of being Sicilian, is about that passion. And you just said an interesting word. I am consumed by this. Yeah. Uh, in other words, you have that message written in your heart about, you know, helping businesses use this uh, hypnotic languaging, if you will, uh, or even individuals using this hypnotic languaging to get over uh, habits or to move to a higher level uh, with their in earnings, uh, with their family or what have you. But I want to talk yeah. about you for a second, about this consuming thing. I know for me, when it comes to messaging, public speaking, this whole thing, uh, I read an interesting thing uh, the other day that says, you know, I can't wait for the sun to rise so that I can do it again. Yeah. Where, where, yeah, where is that? Where is that? Share with the audience because I, I love when talking to somebody who's passionate, where's where that passion coming from? Is, is, is it that you're of service to people? Does it feel uh, fulfill an inner need? Is it a little bit of both? Yeah. Or do you, do you have a new spin on this? You know, I mean, here's the thing, Maurice. You ask any seven-year-old, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> what do they say? I want to be a doctor. I want to be a nurse. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a, po a policeman. I want to be, you know, in the Army. Any seven-year-old knows they're tapped into that inner thing that says, I want to be of service to people. And somewhere along the line, I think we lose that because we, you know, we get, we get, um, we get cookie cutter stamped in, in junior high and high school and college. And, and we get into this whole mindset that it's all about the money and it's all about the lifestyle and it's all about the things that you can buy and, and the, you know, 2.5 kids and the white picket fence. And you know what? Those things are nice to have in life. I'm not saying they're not nice. I've had them. 
But for me, what really, you know, you and I both know Glenn Morshauer, right? Celebrity actor who was in 24 and Black Hawk Down and Transformers and all those. And one of the things I love that he says is this. He says, you know, there are some people, abundant people you usually find, wealthy people, that they take their napkin and they tuck it right here in their collar. And then there are some people that put the napkin on their lap. He said, but the thing, the real true key to, to fulfilled life is when you pick that napkin up, you drape it over your arm and say, how can I serve you? And that is, that's the key. And you're, you're absolutely right. There's something about it. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be in service. But I didn't do well in junior high and high school. I'm one of those kids they would label ADD. Um, you know, and um, for me, the struggle of going through school and the struggle of looking at something like being a lawyer or being a doctor and that just extra 12 years of school, it, it just wasn't something, especially back then, that I could handle. And so I ended up going into a field that I had a lot of aptitude in, but I wasn't passionate about. And I think that's what most people do. Most people fall into a career that either, either was handed to them or was selected by their parents or by their family lineage or whatever it is, and they, they live dispassionate lives until they get to a point where they look back and they go, oh my God, I'm almost out of time. And one of the things that I teach people is, is not necessarily in, in connection with this conversational hypnosis stuff, but don't wait until it's too late. Find out what your passion is now and then figure out a way to make it happen. And that's what I did. You know, eight years ago, I left the computer programming field forever. I'll never go back. Um, and it wasn't, um, it's not that computer programming is a bad field. There are some people who are passionate about it and that's what they're meant to do here. I found what I'm passionate about which is empowering people. And I'm looking forward to uh, you bringing that passion to, uh, to the stage at our Discover Your Million Dollar Message intensive. And that's that's the whole point of it uh, with our intensive is that I ask people, you know, point blank, what is that million dollar message written in your heart that the world is waiting to hear? Yeah. And it's amazing how many people hum and haw and not sure, or they stutter and stop. Yeah. And I agree with you. I think each and every one of us has that message written in our heart. And that's yeah. just that layers of, I don't know if it's society, family, or what have you. It just uh, gets in the way, and it's amazing what goes through uh, our three days. They go through this cathartic experience. And yeah. I know with you uh, on the headline, uh, you're definitely going to be sharing with us some great information. So let, let's yeah. let's get down to business here. Uh, I used the okay. phrase before, psychological warfare. And I, and, yeah. and I, make, I, have, I have no bones about it. I, and that's what I tell people. I said, when you get up in front of people, whether you have a product, a service, a charity, or even an inf even a, an inspirational message, you're, yeah. you are selling something, right? Yep. You're selling something. And I know as soon as we start speaking, you start speaking about a product, a service, or even a, a message, already the walls start going up. The, you know, the <laughs> yeah. Up. So I, I talk about in my template and sharing with people about this psychological warfare. Do you d agree? Do you disagree? Do you think I'm crazy? Where, where no, are you? Absolutely agree. And matter of fact, I you know I almost sometimes feel like I deal with that more than most speakers. You know, I, I um, w was at an event that you were at actually, and you saw me speak, and I was actually introduced about a half a day earlier by the host saying, uh, "Michael Stevens is going to come up later. He's the hypnotist guy. He's going to hypnotize the whole audience," <laughs> which of course oh, was great. not what I was doing at all. I was teaching subconscious influence, but about half the room left. So I literally ended up with half the room missing by the time that my time to get up on stage was because there were so many people in the audience afraid of being hypnotized. They thought it was going to make them bark like chickens. I think they thought it was a stage hypnotist. And so literally there was this mass exodus after dinner and half the people left and didn't come back. And the rest of the people that were there were so skeptical. I mean, and it's, got, it's actually gotten to the point for me that when I step up on stage, I'm looking out and I see those people kind of sitting back like this and they're, they're giving me the stink eye. I love it. I absolutely love it these days because I know here's an opportunity for me to win somebody over. Um, and I actually, you know, when it comes to speaking, I actually think that when you can take somebody from disbeliever to believer, rather than just preaching to the choir and having an audience that's super receptive to you, it's, you know, it's nice to have an audience that's super receptive, but I think when you can take people on that journey from having the walls up to bringing the walls down voluntarily, I actually think you impact them more um, by winning people over rather than just having them be won over already. Um, so I've actually gotten to the point where I love the challenge. I love that warfare of getting up on stage and going, I can tell that you're not into me right now, but I'm going to win you over. And, and my task is I try to win them over in the first 10 minutes so the other 80 minutes can be something that they can grow from. Um, so you know, I've actually gotten to the point where I, I sort of feed off of that initially. 
Well, you're 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 more gutsier than I because I I, I like leave leave those rubber neckers alone. I'm like move on. I move on to my cheerleaders. I go for yeah. the low hanging fruit. So God God bless you. Uh, and you know, again, uh, speaking about the psychological warfare, I know you have the the uh, the, uh, the phrase uh, covert uh, conversational hip, uh, hypnosis. Yeah. Uh, I like to call it, um, um, and I know Tom Hogan talks about it in his book, Covert Persuasion. Yeah. In other words, even certain words, phrases yeah. uh, that we could inject into the way we present. And again, I, I just want to say for the people who are, who are watching uh, this Hangout, that, and Michael, please add to this as well, that when I talk about presenting yourself, I'm talking about even at work, uh, yeah. on, online, in, 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 in uh, a Twitter feed. Online at Starbucks, I feel that all as Shakespeare would say, all the world's a stage. And as soon yeah. as you open your mouth, you are presenting yourself. True. Now, why not present yourself in the best possible way? And and again, now let's talk about this uh, covert conversational hypnos uh, hypnosis. Yeah. Is it words? Is it trickery? Is it you know smoke and mirrors? What, what exactly is that? No, it's not. You know, here's the thing is, is the science has been done on this for years now. There's a book called Flow that was written back in the um, early 90s. It was a bestseller. Um, I can't even pronounce the guy's name. I think it's it, Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. Mihaly, I, I think is his name. Um, <laughs> and, and the book was called Flow, the, uh, the Science of Optimal Experience. And in that book, he says, your mind is made up of two components, conscious mind and your subconscious mind. Now, we always say you're, you only think with 10% of your mind, right? It's like this pop psychology figure that we throw around, 10%. We've heard that a million times. It's nowhere near that. Your conscious mind that you think with is, it, as it turns out, six one thousandth of 1% of your entire mind. It's not even a percent. It's a fraction of a percent, a tiny fraction, which means that the subconscious mind is actually 99.994% of the mind. The problem is that most people when they speak on stage or they speak in groups or they speak one-on-one, -on -one, they're only speaking to that 0.006%. They're trying to convince people logically in the conscious mind and they're ignoring the fact that most sales are not made in the conscious mind. We've all had the situation where you come across a product or service, you know you need it, but for some reason you're not compelled to buy it, right? Have you ever had that situation happen? That's, when, that's what happens when you convince somebody logically that they need to buy something. But when you convince somebody in the subconscious level, which is where all the emotions are harbored, you, I'm sure you've had the same situation where even though you don't need something, you've got that emotional tug and you end up buying it anyway. Now the problem is if you sell only to the conscious mind, you'll only um, convince them logically. If you sell only to the subconscious mind, you'll convince them emotionally but that's not always the best thing, too. We've all been to those seminars where, you know, they get you all charged up and they go, now run to the back table and sign up. And we get that table rush, right? And we can see, like, 70 people run to the back table. And they all sign up in a fury and they're all excited. But one of the things we know from the statistics in the speaking field is when you get that table rush and all those people go excited to the back table, what will happen is within three to five days, sometimes 40, 50, 60 percent of those people will call up and cancel. Because what happens? They go home, the emotion wears off, and now there's no reason to have that product or service anymore. And so, you know, what covert conversational hypnosis is about, or what I call subconscious influence, what it's really about is learning how to speak to both sides of the mind. It's learning how to, and it's not just logical and emotional, it goes way deeper than that. But when you can learn to speak to a whole person, so when you make that offer, that pitch, that whatever you want to call it, invitation, the entire person is aligned with that decision, then they never cancel. My cancellation rate, because I do platform speaking like you do, um, I also do you know, some, some keynote speeches and things too, but most of my business is platform speaking. My cancellation rate is less than 1%. There are other speakers in the field, big names that you would know, and the, you know, the rumor on the street is that they've got a 65-70% cancellation rate after the, after the show. And so that's the thing is, you know, we've got to learn how to connect with people on such a deep level that they would never regret buying it. They would never think of canceling it. They're so engaged and they're so in that it's, it's their whole self that's in. No conflicts, no doubts, no indecision. And, you know, you said you made mention of, uh, you know, the logic and the emotional. And I'm a big believer that, you know, a lot of people want to go up there. And now we're talking about platform speaking. And they have a presentation to make. And they want to yeah. discuss the 27 you know, benefits, the feature sets, and they really emphasize the logic of it, the logic 
logic of the purchase, the logic of the investment, and that's yeah. why they're not doing good with, uh, not not doing well with their sales. Yeah. I just can you just take a can we just take a peek uh, into the emotion? You know, when I when I teach, I always say lead with the motion, then mm -hmm. follow with the logic. Back can I keep going logic. a little bit more into that that emotional state? Yeah, yeah. I think the you know the real issue is that most people don't know how to tap into that emotional state. Um, you know, the the way that it's typically taught in a sales course is um, you tell somebody what the feature is, and then you say, and what that means for you is. But right. usually people follow that up with another sort of a feature. You know, they don't, I don't think people really understand the difference between features and benefits. But here's the thing. Even speaking to the benefit won't always get you to that emotional side if the person sitting in the audience isn't connected with that benefit. And so, you know, this is, this is one of the things is, is finding out those people that are sitting in the audience, what's important to them? What is it that really drives them? You know, there are certain things that you can always touch on that will always get people emotionally. If people are parents, all you have to do is talk about their children. You know, one of the things that I say in my presentation is, um, you know, people always come to me and they go, you know, Michael, I've got my teenager, they've disconnected from me. It's, it's not my fault as a parent, it's the media, it's the friends that they hang out with, it's the influence at school, my child is disconnected, I don't know what to do. And I look at people and I say, it has nothing to do with any of those things. It's not the media, it's not their friends, it's not the school. The reason your child isn't connecting with you is because you don't know how to connect with them. You, have, you don't know how to use the words which actually connect with your child at that deeper level. And, you know, I always say this, whether your child does drugs or not comes down to this question, who's the better hypnotist, you or the drug dealer? Mm. That's really what it comes down to because the drug dealer knows your child well enough and knows what the kid wants enough that they can hook them and, and, and sometimes, unfortunately, get them to take that step. Do the parents know their child well enough? And that's the thing is when you can really start studying human psychology and understand what makes people tick, what motivates people, what, and we're talking about buying here, but I got to say it goes way deeper than that because, you know, my number one value in my business is not money and it's not sales. I, I don't think that, you know, if you're passionate about something, it's not just about the money. You know, I, I really think that's true. I always tell people it's really easy to add money to a heart-centered business, but it's almost impossible to add heart to a money-centered business. You know, if you're all about the money, it's, it compromises things. So for me, my number one core value in my business is transformation. I want, when I step up on stage in that 90 minutes, I want that person to walk away a better person for having listened to me for 90 minutes. Either they have a brighter day or they come out with a new belief or they've changed their outlook on something, but in some way, their life Life will never be the same again because of that 90 minutes. Even if it's just a little tiny deviation from the track that they're on, over time that grows. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, using conversational hypnosis goes, it's not just about sales. That's one of the, you know, things, especially business owners, they, they can tell me how to close more sales. But to me, if you are improving people's lives and you're making people feel better just by being in your presence, the sales are going to be automatic. People are going to want to spend more time around you. They're going to, they're going to say, tell me how to, then that's the thing is I, I can sometimes do a presentation and run out of time and not even get to do a, a, you know, what we often call a pitch. And I will still have people coming up to me going, how can I spend more time with you? I want to learn about this. People come and ask me for the sale. And that's the difference, I think, between the old model of sales of trying to force people into a sale and the new model of sales, which is um, weaving words that move people so that they want to spend more time around you. They're infected by your energy. They're infected by your presence. And they can't wait to figure out how to spend more time with you. The sale is almost automatic. You don't have resistance in that case. Oh, Michael, that, that's beautiful. Well, I hate to disagree with you uh, in that. I'm in it for the money, OK? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying money isn't one of my values. It's just not yeah, my okay, okay, value. okay. I just want to make sure I have the right people on my stage here. Uh, because I, I always say this, uh, money yeah. I'm sorry. Happiness makes the world go round, yeah. but money sure greases the axle. Oh, it sure uh, does. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer, and I, I always joke about that that I'm interested in money. But again, I do believe that money is a magnifier. Yeah, uh, and, it is. Uh, you know, and I'm a I'm a big believer in my message. And if I may borrow from Tony Robbins, you know, I want to I want to reach every single person on this planet. Do you know how much money that's going to take? So <laughs> it's going to take a yeah, lot. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You, know, you, you bring it up an interesting point. And I could just hear, uh, you know, just hear people thinking to themselves that, okay, I'm listening, I'm, I'm, I'm in it for now for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. When it comes to my business, you know, okay, I got, I got Maurice's template, I got uh, Craig's Rockstar uh, marketing, yeah. I got Jennifer Bagley's converting time to money. 
where where do I fit in? Why why would I why would I want to do this? Uh, hypnosis, this, uh, you know, this influential hypnosis, this covert yeah. hypnosis. One of the first reasons I tell people to listen, to learn it is just to recognize when it's being used on you. It's being used all everywhere. Right. People don't realize this is being used in marketing all over the place. It's being used in advertising. It's being used in TV and in media. But really, in terms of, you know, your audience, any tool that you learn, and I, you know, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's learning something from Craig or from you or from any of the speakers. Any tool that you learn, if you don't know how to communicate well, it won't work, or it won't work as well. And so, what this is really about is taking, you know, whatever whatever tools you learn, and then augmenting. It's like you said, money is an amplifier. Conversational hypnosis is an amplifier. So if they pick up a tool from you and they double their sales, then they bring conversational hypnosis into it. It'll just amplify everything that they've learned by making them a better communicator and that's really what it's all about conversational hypnosis is not about controlling people if it were I probably wouldn't be on this you know this hangout with you I you know I'd be out uh, <laughs> hypnotizing everybody in the world yeah, exactly. I'd end, I would end all the wars and release all the prisoners make them do good things there's all kinds of great things you can do with hypnosis if you can control people it's not about controlling people it's about moving people and I think that's the thing is that a lot of times, you know, today, you know, in the speaker industry, we sometimes have a problem with some speakers where it's like that whole pitch fest thing, you know, and it builds up a, um, it builds up a wall, like you were talking about before, the psychological warfare. People go out and they go, okay, I've been to so many of these other pitch fests, I'm not, and the wall comes up, and they don't realize that sometimes, you know, there's people like, like you and me and like Craig and, and um, your other guest speakers who we're really here to provide value. We're going to provide as much value as we can, but if you got that wall up, how can we provide that value to you? You know, you've got to learn to be able to get in there, and it's about having the key to that wall. You know, what, what I always tell people is this. If you think about your conscious mind as one of those um, funny guards that you see at the, at the uh, Buckingham Palace, they got the big fuzzy hat on, and, right. you know, if you go up to those guards and try to get in the door, there is nothing, nothing you can do to get past that door. And that, your conscious mind is very much like that, that gatekeeper, that guard. It's the subconscious mind that makes all your decisions for you, and that's who we really really need to talk to from stage but you've got to learn to get that key or that right command to get that guard to step away so that we can then get in and speak to the most powerful part of mind which is the subconscious mind and at that point every sales tool that you've ever learned becomes more powerful every speaking tool that you've learned becomes more powerful and that's that's why I'm, I'm looking forward to joining us at discover your million dollar message intensive I think you're just gonna add that uh, that that perfect ingredient uh, for our third day which we talk about uh, monetize your message yeah I, I, I'm gonna give them the, the, the greatest tool that I know uh, my template uh, my yeah. Sicilian mental presentation template but you're right if they don't have these little tools these little techniques on how to get past that conscious mind to speak to the subconscious the decision maker uh, then you know again you can have the best tennis racket in the world you can have the best yeah. basketball in the world it means absolutely nothing if you don't know how to use it and not right. only that use it against your uh, uh, your opponent there yeah. uh, you know again another thing I'm thinking in my mind uh, not only for for work or even for for home uh, with this uh, this this covert uh, hypnosis do I need a degree in this? Uh, I know I've, I've I know I've asked you this. <laughs> I've asked you countless times. <laughs> what book? What seminar? And and I yeah. want to talk to. I know, ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen a more busy speaker in my life than Michael Stevenson. <laughs> he's he's putting on an event or in an event uh, every two seconds. Uh, every time yeah. I call or text Michael, he's like, "Wait, I'm on stage right now. Hold on, I'll be right back." <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But do I do I need a degree? Uh, do I need you know months of training? Uh, and, and, and you know. What is this going? What is this going to take so that I could I, I could really get to my audience, let them know what my message is, and now that persuade them to see my point of view? Yeah, you know that's the biggest misconception. I, I know when I first started to get into hypnosis, I actually felt a little guilty reading the books. I thought, am I supposed to be like educated? You know, in psychology is, and, and here's the thing: is you know, hypnosis is something that is, um, it's not psychology, and that's I think one of the biggest misconceptions. Hypnosis, especially the kind of hypnosis we're talking about, is just really excellent communication. And so you don't have to have any kind of a degree. You don't have to have any kind of background in psychology. Matter of fact, I'm going to share a lot of tips on your stage. I'm going to tell people exactly what the conscious mind and the unconscious mind are, and I'm going to give them all the foundation that they need to understand the mind and, and um, some tips to be hypnotic from stage. Um, so I'm really looking forward to sharing some of those tips. Um, they're going to walk out knowing how to be more hypnotic just from uh, the presentation that I do at your event. Great, fantastic, and that and that's exactly um, 
that what exactly what I want you to do, ladies and gentlemen. I, I have seen Michael. Uh, I see Michael speak, and and every time I see him, it's like, okay, he's got to be on the stage. He's got to join us for our monetized day. Uh, I, I may teach you how to make them an offer that they can't refuse. Uh, Michael will add the layer that they hypnotically can't refuse. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to joining us uh, on our slate of speakers. Just I, I just want to touch base uh, about your book uh, because yeah. I'm I'm thinking that do I. Can I learn something from the book? Uh, I know that I could definitely learn from you. Uh, I want to talk about your speaking engagements. But your, your book, of Becoming a Hypnotic Influence Ninja, uh, yeah. can you share, share little tips or, or, or something from the book that we could learn from that? Or uh, is sure. it a great starting point? It's a great starting point. It's, you know, the whole reason, I, you know, I, be, I became famous in this field back in 2003 for writing a book called Learn Hypnosis Now. Every book that I could find, and I've read just about every book ever published on hypnosis. I've read, you know, probably by this point, thousands of books. I lost count a long time ago. Every book I ever read, read like a dissertation. It was written by people who were using fancy $5 words and big, long sentences, and it was so hard to understand for such a simple concept. And so I wrote a book back then to teach people, you know, how to use hypnosis in a simple way. Well, now I've done it again with this book called Becoming a Hypnotic Influence Ninja, but it's just more about how to use conversational hypnosis. And really what I did was I tried to find in 100 pages or less, could I give people enough tools that they can go out and start making a difference in their business, in their life, in their relationships, everywhere. And, you know, really what it did, I broke it down into simple chapters that are about, you know, one and a half to three pages each, and every chapter gives you one little influence tip. Um, and, and uh, matter of fact, I was just this last uh, four days, I was at an event, and, and I, I won't name the name if you don't want me to, but I was at an event, and um, I had sent the speaker that book, and he was so thrilled by it, he so loved it, that he mentioned it four times on stage. At one point, he actually said, who in the audience has bought Michael's book? Stand up. And he had the audience stand up, and he looks at the rest of them, and he goes, why haven't the rest of you bought it? You know, there was about 30, 40 people that stood up. He goes, why haven't the rest of you bought it? I told you it's a great book. Go get it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it, it was one of those things. And, and he's been a speaker for, you know, over 15 years now, I think. And he basically said, you know, I, I've taken what people used to have to go to expensive neuro-linguistic programming trainings for. These big weeks long trainings that cost thousands of dollars. He took it all and boiled it down into one little book that's easy to read. Um, and that, that was my purpose for it. Is it, is it possible? Uh, can you give us a little, a little, little tip, a little tip sure. on uh, some covert uh, hypnotic language that uh, people can walk away with from this hangout? Absolutely. I'll give you. I'll give you. Um, this is, one, this is a, a powerful tip. Um, we human beings are hardwired on certain kinds of thinking. There's certain things that in our mind they sort of run like an automatic program. You can't disconnect them. So one of the things about us is that we are what I call cause and effect creatures. So imagine that, that that door behind you swings open for no reason, right? Is it ever no reason? Of course not. When that door swings open, what's the first question you ask yourself? Why did that happen? To the point where a lot of times if we can't explain it, we'll even come up with crazy woo-woo kind of you know, answers. It must have been a ghost <laughs> you know, or something because we can't conceive that in this universe there was an effect without something to cause it. So this can actually be used in a very powerful way. It's what we call cause and effect statements. Um, I'm trying to figure out the simplest way to break this down in just a minute or two. Cause and effect statements are statements that sound like if then. Um, so if then is one kind of a statement which says something for the fact, uh, something to the effect of if you come to my course, then you're going to learn how to close more sales. And the beauty about cause and effect statements is this: the cause and effect relationship doesn't have to be true. It only has to sound plausible. So, you know, this is the kind of thing where I'm trying to think of some other, another cause and effect statement is the word because. So let's talk about this for a second. If I say, and this was done in the study back in the 1970s, Robert Cialdini talks about it in his book Influence. Um, they took a, a person that had a bunch of papers in their hand. A person walks up to a, a Xerox machine with a big long line at the library. And they walked up to the front of the line and they said, excuse me, can I cut in front of you? Okay. Now, it was a big long line. They walk right up to the front and say, can I cut in front of you? 20% of people said yes, 80% of people said, take a hike, get out of here. <laughs> You're not cutting in front of me. So they did this a number of times throughout the day, and it was always 20%. The next day they came back, and they decided, let's add a reason in it. We'll see how that changes things. So they walked up to the front of the line, papers in the hand. They said, can I make a copy because my boss will fire me if I don't get these made? Well, 
now that there was a reason for it, it actually, the numbers flipped. 80% of people said yes, let him cut in front of line, and 20% of the people said take a hike. So they started thinking about it, and they thought, well, you know, a lot of people probably just have compassion for the person because they're about to get fired. So let's change the because. Let's change this cause and effect relationship, right? And the cause and effect relationship is if I don't make the copy, I'll be fired. People don't want them to get fired, so they let them in. So they said, let's change the because. Instead of saying I'm going to get fired, let's just add a reason that doesn't add any more value to it. So on the third day, person walks up with papers in hand. They said to the first person in line, can I cut in front of you because I have to make some copies? Right? 80% right. of people said yes. And this was the important takeaway from that, which is that if... If you want people to say yes to you, always have a because. Because that cause and effect, because means it's cause, right? It's a cause of something. If you don't add a because, you can see the results. 20% of people said yes, 80% said no. But the minute they added any kind of a reason of a because or a result of, it immediately switches something on in the person's brain, and now they're more likely to say yes. I mean, measures, you know, four times more likely to say yes. So, um, you know, and, and I give a lot of examples in the book, some basic examples of if-then statements so, you know, people don't have to figure it out for themselves. But, um, you know, there's, there's certain things that, uh, just like that, they're automatic programs that you can trigger in a person's mind and they fire off. A person doesn't even know it's happening. It's all subconscious. I love it. I love it. And, and I'm, I'm looking forward to sh you sharing all those tips and techniques uh, yeah. at our intensive. Uh, coming up May 3rd, 4th, and 5th because I don't know when you started that because then all that I, I knew the word because and I'm like oh I love this you're turning yeah. me on over here you're, <laughs> you, got me, you got me going with your, with your uh, covert hypnosis uh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen we have been speaking here with Michael Stevenson uh, a master hypnotherapist uh, uh, a trainer of hypnosis for over 15 years and now that he's one of our featured guests of, of our upcoming Discover Your Million Dollar Message intensive uh, Michael I hope our Google Hangout shotgun. Uh, how was your first experience going under the Hangout shotgun? I absolutely loved it. This was easy and it was fun. All right. Fantastic. And ladies and gentlemen, we look forward uh, to you joining us uh, on our at our uh, Discover Your Million Dollar Message uh, Intensive. Uh, in fact, there's about f a few seats left. I'm going to say about five seats left. Uh, if you go to our website, mauricedomino.com, and use the phrase Hangout, uh, you will get uh, an added bonus a discount uh, of over $300 to come uh, to the intensive. So again, Michael, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time uh, on our Hangout. Thank you, Maurice. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much. And you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on this version of the Sicilian Shotgun as we presented uh, Michael Stevenson. Uh, I am Maurice Domino, your Sicilian mentor. Uh, the Sicilian mentor is the home of the shotgun, as well as the Discover Your Million Dollar Message Intensive every spring and fall here in the Los Angeles area. We love to see you at one of these intensives, as well as our master class. And don't forget, you can always put that social to social networking when you join us at one of our Sicilian Sunday dinners. Look for it at your coming, uh, look for it on, <laughs> up in your coming neighborhood. Uh, this is Maurice Domino wishing you all a buona fortuna, a good fortune in the in the years ahead, and we'll see you on the next shotgun. Ciao, ciao. See you guys next weekend.